happen. Because I tell you something, my brothers and sisters, when you make Jesus the reason for the season, you will get joy overflow in your soul. When you make Jesus the reason for the season, everything that you struggle with, the pain and the grief is replaced with complete joy because Jesus is the light of the world and everything he placed in us is joy. And so this morning as I wrapped up reclaiming your joy, I see the biblical way of celebrating Christ's birth is simple. We read about the wise men bringing gift, which is why we give gift to each other. Because we show the love of Jesus by giving gift to someone else. But the biblical way of celebrating the Savior, mm, there is no worry. There is no pain. There is no anxiety. It's just joy. All of you will be at the Bible shows today to celebrate his birth. We remember the promise that comes from his birth. A promise of hope, joy, peace, and love. And we sing the chorus just like the angel did. And if you're like me and you're told that, still sing, my people. Sing. Sing. Hey, nobody can hear. Sing like you're in the shower. Okay? Sing. There is just some explicit joy that comes from Christmas card. I don't know if you feel it, but I know I do. But we're singing silent night. Holy night. When we're singing joy to her, and see that joy, that inner joy, and I'm filled up with song. That's what Christmas should be about. You're watching the distance this season play that noise into the background. Let the joy of Christmas carol and fill your home. Somebody should be walking outside and hearing, no matter how loud it is, you turn it up out, okay? I mean, I'm different. I have a hearing aid, so I can turn it down if you get too loud. But we gotta find way to put all those Christmas carving back into Christmas. The angels show us the importance of that. And the most important thing you know is about the story is no one was alone. The shepherd as the angel, and Mary as Joseph, and they all as Jesus. So you became the joy of Christmas season. By putting the Savior back inside of it. And he will help you to get over all the struggle, the grief, the pain, the sadness, the anxiousness that you feel because it's Christmas. And so I pray that this season, this year, you will have a joyful and blessed Christmas. Amen? Amen. 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 And before I leave, I want to invite you. I'm going to ask everyone to just stand over the church. And I want to invite you today. If you don't have Jesus into your life, I know it's not with the pastor to say it, but it's not my word. It's the word of one of the wisest men that ever lived on the church, Solomon. He had everything big house. Everything, tons of chariot, which we could lay with tons of horses today. And you know, I should promise not to say this, but also a whole bunch of women. I mean, he was wild, but <laughs> But Solomon had everything, and he recognized this important thing. Life is meaningless without God. We celebrate the birth of our Savior this moment because he came down on this earth to save us. His birth is an amazing blessing. His birth brings great news and good tidings to the world. Many people do not understand this. But see, without Jesus being on this earth, you are all doomed. Because you're all born in sin and error. But because of Jesus, you have a choice. A choice to choose life. A choice to choose Jesus. But many people does not understand this. You see, sometimes they think it's just a religious thing. But for me, as I often say, it's not about you just choosing Jesus. It's about you choosing and relaxing.
Christ to the mouth. There is a war going on right now between the church and the world. And the fight is still going on each day. Because we will keep fighting the good fight. I will do everything I can to make sure no one is going to hell. But I can't choose heaven for you. You have to choose heaven for yourself. And that's what makes it a fight. Because the word entices us for all the wonderful pleasure of the things that have. And that's what the enemy wants. My grandmother usually said, Miss me love company. But I am telling you, so that's Satan. And he will do everything to bring you down here with him. And don't think that after you down there, believe he's going to be having you and say, Come on, my friend. No, he is not. He's just going to 